This is Craig Egan. I'm a manufacturing applications engineer here at Go Engineer, and today I'm going to cover how to create interactive features. Now, if you're not familiar with that, it's referring to features that we create manually. Normally, we start out with extract machinable features and let the software do the majority of the work for us. But there are some times where we have to do a few features ourselves. So I'm here to explain what all those features are and what they do. So to start, we need to create a mill part setup, which is a direction of machining. Um, in our feature tree, uh, which right now I'm using CamWorks, this is also applicable to SOLIDWORKS CAM. Uh, we'll right click on either Stock Manager or Coordinate System and select mill part setup or at the top here under setup we have mill setup it's the same thing regardless of which one you select we need to choose at least a plane or a face so now I have a mill part setup one so now I have a machining direction I'm going to right click and select two and a half axis feature I'm going to start with an open pocket now what an open pocket is going to do is it's going to rough out the stock that's from uh, this surface all the way up to my stock which I set my stock to the height of these extruded uh, bosses. So uh, I've got open pocket I'm just going to click on this face for my end condition I'm going to select up to stock. Now you can see these dashed lines, these green dashed lines that's indicating an open air segment uh, which means that the tool is not confined within these uh, lines. It can actually pass through and go um, outside of those, um, which is helpful for this, as well as for slots, uh, so the tool can go past. Uh, I'm going to leave my strategy to rough finish, and I've got this, uh, this icon selected so that I can continue creating features without having to um, open this window each time. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to move to the pockets. I've got two pockets here. I'll select the bottom of the face, which gives me the profile. Then I just have to specify the end condition. And I'm going to use this face as the end condition. Now a pocket is a fully enclosed shape, walls uh, surrounded by walls. And now I will do... Um, these two slots here and you'll notice that the open air segments are um, at the end here and now I'm going to do those corner slots and you'll take note of the dashed lines one thing we can do if we want to constrain the tool for some reason to not go past those. Um, essentially we could turn this into a pocket feature. We could tell the tool not to go past these two uh, these two lines. Um, to do that we would come over to here to edit feature profiles and you'll notice that we have uh, five segments here. Two have this light blue uh, color and the rest of these dark blue. Uh, right now segment one's highlighted and you can see it's uh, to the left of my mouse here, the, the dashed line and there's the other. If we want the tool to be um, constrained, we would select the segment that we want to con constrain the tool in and select this icon here. And you can see it turned solid blue and a solid green line. So I'm going to leave that for demonstration purposes. I'm going to click OK. Now I have left are these uh, two um, extruded bosses. Um, a boss feature is going to go around the outside of the feature that you have selected. So it's basically op opposite of what a pocket is. Pocket will stay on the inside, uh, a boss will stay on the outside. Okay, and I'll go ahead and also do a part perimeter feature. Uh, that just looks at the perimeter of the part 
and goes around it and it's going to be right here so I'll right click on mill part setup and then perimeter feature I can do an open pocket or a boss it defaults to the bottom of the part for the end condition I can add a little bit extra depth to it and then I'm going to generate the operation plan sends everything through the tech database and I'll generate toolpath so you can see here's my open pocket it recognized the um, extrusions here as islands and it's avoided them we have our pockets slots now if I go back to this corner slot where I uh, constrain the tool you'll notice that it only uh, is now allowed to go past this one line segment um, whereas this other corner one we didn't uh, uh, constrain that at all so it does go through both and then there's our, our, our two boss features as well as our part perimeter feature and I'll go ahead and simulate simulate that as well okay okay now let's look at these holes um, first thing I've got to create another mill part setup and I've got uh, counterbore holes I've got a sketch I've got uh, some tapped holes as well as half of a hole and a quarter hole so I'm going to right click uh, two and a half axis feature uh, go to hole and before I actually select these two holes um, I like to do uh, create my features in the same order as um, I would machine them in so I'm actually going to select pocket because I want to use a pocket feature uh, for these uh, counter bores here for the head clearance and then I'm going to select hole and, and grab these two holes and for my end condition um, there's a vertex there from using the hole wizard I'm going to use that to um, drive the depth and now the reason I uh, did the sketches is just to show that um, you can use sketches as um, as a feature uh, for my end condition I have no uh, model geometry to uh, end it on so I'll just do a blind depth of uh, inch and a half and now for these tapped holes The end condition again is going to be the little vertex here. And I could select a thread strategy, um, which would give me a uh, center drill, drill, and a tap. Uh, but with these uh, conditions that I have here, there's actually no uh, matching conditions in the tech database. Um, that's not a problem. But for now, I'm going to select drill. It's at least going to give me a center drill and a drill. and then I can treat these as holes um, which I'm going to do in this example or um, if I wanted to I could treat it as a slot as an open profile um, there's many different ways that you can uh, create features it depends on um, whatever works best Okay. I'll go ahead and generate that. And now what I got to do is uh, I'm going to gener generate the toolpath. I'm going to find uh, the drill for that tap, that tapped hole. I'm going to go to the hole machining and add a tap real quick. Okay. And I'll go ahead and simulate this as well. And if we do the view difference, you'll see the the um, the red here showing a gouge. That's uh, because it's um, the holes aren't modeled in our part, so it's represented as a gouge. Those were the two uh, sketches I used. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to show the area clearance. Uh, feature as well as the curve feature and the open profile 
Uh, so again, um, I can also right click on um, a mill part setup that I already have created to generate another mill part setup. Now the area clearance is under multi-surface feature. And I'm going to do the area clearance with a pattern project. Pattern project is more of a cleanup, a cleanup pass. So now under a two and a half axis feature, I've got open profile. And open profile is uh, good for any geometry. It just cannot be a closed profile. And so I'm only just going to do it for this chamfer. So um, point 0.2 depth is going to be fine. And then for my curve feature, I'm going to select um, this the bottom of my chamfer here. Okay. And end condition. I'm just going to go to the top here. And again, I'm just I'm just doing this chamfer. Okay. Okay, I'm going to contain uh, this pattern project. I only want it just to clean up this um, this curved part so we can see the simulation on the chamfer a little bit better. Okay, and I'll just make this a little bit bigger cut depth so it doesn't take as long. And I need to switch the tool here for a countersink and under contour I'm going to do a chamfer okay and our for our curve feature the geometry is calculated off the center of the tool so we don't have the option of selecting the chamfer machining um, however, we can still do a chamfer, it's just a little bit differently. So, the allowance, I need to subtract the radius of the tool. And that'll put it right on the edge for us. If we want a little bit of clearance, so that the tip of the countersink isn't right on the edge here, um, we can do uh, an offset on the depth parameter. and add it to our side allowance to offset for that. Okay. And I'll go ahead and simulate this as well. Okay. All right, so I've got a engraved sketch here already. And I've got some stock here so that I can show you a, a face feature, which is also another two and a half axis feature. Um, I'm just gonna select the face and then end condition. It'll default to up to stock so I don't actually have to do anything for it there and then I've got my engraved feature and from available sketches I've got my sketch here my end condition is going to be how deep I want the engraving uh, I'll just do uh, ten thousandths is fine I'm going to hurry and change the engraving tool
And I'll go ahead and simulate this as well. Okay, well that wraps it up. Um, like I said, my name is Craig Egan with Go Engineer, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.